Do you want me to read it? Yeah. Okay, got it right here. Think about the sense of urgency Churchill creates in this speech. Then identify Churchill's messages and analyze his tone, word choice, and rhythm to convey his opinions to his audience. Uh -huh. uh, distinguish those claims that are supported by facts, reasons, and evidence from those that are not. Your prompt, Jared, my captain. Thanks, Ben. Now, where did we leave things? Uh, Harper? Well, last time you asked us to do a close reading of the text uh, with the prompt in mind. And to uh, research the history behind the text. I actually, I made a timeline. Oh. oh. Very good. Yeah. Now, if we're trying to determine the message of the speech, we need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Let's start with this guy, Churchill. Who is he? Well, I already knew a few things about him, mm -hmm. but I did some more research just to make sure I got my facts straight, you know. And I found out that Winston Churchill was a World War II British Prime Minister, and in his speech he was addressing members of Parliament. Yeah, on uh, May 13th, 1940, which means Churchill just became Prime Minister. So this is like his first big speech, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the war had already been going on for a while. Yeah, and Britain's getting crushed. Exactly. So Churchill was elected to rescue <laughs> right. England Not good. and possibly the entire world from a German win. I mean, think about it. The stakes are very yeah. high here. You know, he talks like he's the guy you go to when things are getting really bad. Mm -hmm. His sentences are really short and really to the point. The whole first half of his speech is pretty much just rattling off facts. Yeah. Um, the king formed a new government Friday. I created a five-member war cabinet immediately. Other ministers were appointed yesterday. All of this should be done tomorrow. You're on the money there. So... What would you say is Churchill's main objective in the beginning of the speech? To unify Parliament, I would say. Exactly. Britain doesn't already have enough problems. Parliament was arguing internally. I mean, the different parties were fighting over everything. So Britain has problems overseas and at home. Churchill's got his work cut out for him, yes. I should say. So that's why. Because Churchill, in the beginning of his speech, he's all, every party is represented, mm. no more politics, mm -hmm. no further discussion, everyone. we're done. It's all about the unity of the nation, you know? It makes things sound urgent. Well, yeah, but not just sound urgent. I mean, he flat out says it. It was necessary that this should be done in one single day on account of the extreme urgency and uh, one day. rigor of events. So what does he mean by that? What's rigor? I, didn't get I that. don't know that part, actually. I got you guys. I looked oh, it up. Of course you did. Of course I did. <laughs> so, rigor means difficulty or severity. Well, that makes sense. Mm, so, okay. the war is getting pretty severe, yeah. let's say. <laughs> Where are we on the timeline at this point? Uh, Germany was already in Norway and invaded Holland three days before the speech. Jeez. Okay, the Nazis are like a virus spreading across Europe, like while Churchill is talking. And they're doing it faster than any other army in history. Churchill's just getting all the change of government, administrative junk out of the way so he can get to the war stuff. But that administrative junk is important, too. Okay. Yeah. Remember, Churchill is the new guy. He needs Parliament to trust him as their leader. Yeah, the new guy always has something to prove, right? So, what is Churchill's message, and how does he convey that idea to his audience? Well, the resolution says... Basically, Churchill needs Parliament to acknowledge the new government with him in charge mm -hmm. and to accept the new government's goal, stop Germany. But it's more than just that. I, I mean, if all he wanted was a Parliament vote, he would have just stopped after asking for the resolution. What do you mean? Well, I think Churchill knows that his audience is bigger than just Parliament. But it's a speech to Parliament. And yeah, and everyone no. that hears the speech. Yeah, I mean, they had no internet, but they had... Um, they had, like, radios, right? Yep. Newspapers and radios is all they had. Yeah. And newsreels, like, at Ooh. the movies. What's it? The shorts between... I don't know. What? <laughs> Forget it. Go on, Connor. Okay. Churchill needs to get everybody ready for the fight. Not just Parliament, but the whole country. I would say the whole world. I mean, Hitler's not going to stop until he has it all. But it's a speech to Parliament. <laughs> You're both right. Not just to Parliament. You're both right. It's the speech has more than one audience and more than one goal in mind. Yeah. So what is the first thing Churchill wants to accomplish? I got it. Harper had it. It was to establish unity in Parliament right away. Yes, unity is important, but why? What's the bigger goal? Uh, to win the war? Victory! Yeah. <laughs> right on, okay, Harper. Whatever. Go on. Yeah. Of course okay. it's victory. Yeah. Well, 
When Churchill starts talking about winning, his tone totally changes. Mm. He stops talking about political parties and starts getting kind of, I don't know, preachy? Preachy? I guess what I kind of mean is speechy. No, yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's, it's less, it's less business-like, more, more poetic. Poetic? How is that poetic in any way? R rallying, it's like a thundering speech, you know? That's talking about victory at all costs. I've never heard a poem like that. <clears throat> I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Wow, that was a pretty bad British accent, man. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, seriously, it's an amazing line. No, yeah. And it's, you, it's getting right really there. personal. He's saying he'd give it his all for the war. What about you? Me? Well, probably not you, but anyone else who heard this speech, it's it's a call to action. I mean, by saying he'd go the distance to give his blood, toil, tears, and sweat to the cause, I mean, it encourages everyone else to do the same. Churchill knows that most of Europe is going to be under Nazi control very soon. I mean, think about that. Nazi what if you thought we were about to be taken over by Hitler? That's scary. It's up to Britain. They're the only ones left, at least in Europe. I mean, it's just this little island with the English Channel separating it from what's going on next door. But he doesn't just say Germany or even Hitler. He says, uh, a monstrous tyranny never surpassed in the dark and lamentable catalog of human crime. See? Perfect example. I mean, that's just like a poem. No, that's still not like a poem. It's language that makes you want to fight. I mean, how could you not take a stand against a monstrous tyranny? Yeah, it even it re gets really ominous at one point. Hold on. Uh... Without victory, there is no survival. I mean, yeah, you know, it sounds like the whole human race is at stake. You know, I heard that. It'd be setting up right away. Yeah, yeah, you're both so very brave, as was Churchill. But getting back to the prompt, guys, this is when Churchill starts getting away from facts, and he starts letting them have it with opinions. Always good to look back at the prompt. Go on, Harper. Okay, well, it's not necessarily true that if Europe falls, Great Britain will too. And there's always Russia and America to come to Britain's aid. You're right, and that's what happens, too. Uh, but what's he up to here? He does the sort of uh, question and answer thing. Like, he has the question, what is our policy? And then right after an answer, I say it is to wage war by land, sea, and air. Or what is our aim? Victory. I mean, there is no other answer. There's no other option. It's just how it is. Victory. Yeah, the repetition he uses is super powerful. He says the word victory, like... At least five times at one point. Watch. Yeah. Uh, victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terrors. Victory, however long and hard the road may be, for without victory, victory. there is wow. no survival. I mean, it gets you going. How could Parliament not support him after this? And it's an interesting point, because anyone who hears this is going to know Britain's ready. And yeah. they'll get off the sidelines. Yeah. yeah. Hello, America, I'm talking to you. And if the Germans hear it, they're going to know that it's... It's a whole new ball game. It's right? game time. Wow. <laughs> and he did all this with just a few words. Pretty yeah. Pretty cool, right? You guys are off to a really good start. How about we uh, read the text and look for okay. a few more examples of how he uses language to do his thing? And um, you guys do a quick reread while I grab coffee? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Okay. Harper, can you start us off? Yep.